Hi everyone, my name is Penny Johnson. I'm a faculty member in the Administrative Professional, Medical Administrative Specialist, and Office Management programs at Madison College. In today's presentation, I'm going to talk to you about advancing your career during the pandemic, or what we might call the new normal. And why we want to cover this ground today is because throughout your career, there are going to be different points in time where you're actively seeking another employment position, or you might just have one come your way and you want to be ready to apply and win that new position. So um, things are different now since the pandemic has started. So let's talk about how you can be ready to advance your career at any point in time. And then we'll specifically talk about what you need to know during this new normal period. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, I teach at Madison College and we have great resources for uh, students. So if you're a current Madison College student, I recommend that you visit the web page and use the search bar to search for the phrase career and employment services. They have lots of great resources to help you, including advisors that can review materials or bounce ideas off of. They have job host sites specifically for technical college graduates, so you can use that to look for employers who are looking for graduates like you. Just lots and lots of resources. So first of all, check that out. All right, now, what other kind of work do you need to do? Let's go ahead and get started. Oops, one more time. Um, so when you're searching for a job, there are lots of questions that will come to mind, and there's lots of things to consider. So for example, what kind of research do you need to do to find that perfect job, right? You don't wanna apply just for any old job. You wanna find the job that's the right fit for you and the right fit for your long-term career. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. We're gonna to talk about how to fit in your education and we're gonna talk about education globally, including training and what kinds of things you can do to help be the best job candidate you can be. And then we're gonna talk about things like other opportunities that will help you during this new normal time, not just work, but the other kinds of, of activities and events that you can take advantage of. All right, so first things first, your first step is to update your resume. If you haven't looked at your resume in the last three months, you are required. I'm giving this to you as a requirement. You are required to look at your resume because so much has changed in the last three months. And then even if you have updated your resume in the last three months, you're still gonna have to take a look at it. And let's talk about why that is. So first of all, you have to just look at your resume and make sure all information is current and accurate. Our career lives change so quickly that we need to be updating our resume all of the time. There may be a new project that you've worked on, a new skill that you've acquired. And for us now living in this new normal because of the pandemic, there has lots that have been changed. And for several uh, slides, I'm gonna to talk to you about what you need to change on your resume. So first of all, just look to see if it's current and accurate for the kind of work that you've been doing. Um, and then I, I want you to look at it again. So do that first and then sort of set it aside and come back to it with fresh eyes, maybe a day or two later. And I want you to look at your resume for what's missing, specifically what's missing um, that, that has happened during this new normal during since the pandemic started. Okay, and here's why. Everybody agrees that work is different now. If you think about the normal sort of work life we had a year ago or two years ago, the way we work now since the pandemic has happened is different. It is different. And you have to recognize that because everybody agrees we're not going back. We're not going back to the way things were, where people had a clock in at nine and clock out at five. We were forced into this, lots of places were forced into this idea of remote work. I knew plenty of workers who were dabbling in remote work, maybe a day or two, but now we're all in, right? Organizations are all in with this remote work because we had to. And we're seeing that we're not gonna go back to the way it was. People will go back to their workplaces, their physical buildings, but the way that we used to work in person, on site all the time, we're not gonna to return to that. Okay, so look for the skills, knowledge, and tools that we're applying in today, today's work world, this new normal. And I'll talk to you about several points to, to cover in the next few slides. 
And so as you're thinking about the way work is now, and if you're a current student, I want you to think about your school, your academic life as your work life. How is it different now than it used to be? Because it reflects some of the same things. This idea of remote work, right, is remote classes. So what have you had to apply now that you didn't used to have to apply before? So you're thinking about that. You're thinking about what's missing. And then hopefully some of you are thinking, oh, Penny, I've been taking online classes or I've been doing remote work for years. This isn't new for me. There's no new normal. This is my regular normal. And that's great. It might not be new for you. It's new for lots of us. But I still want you to think of it as new. You may have skills, knowledge, and tools that you applied in the past but you still need to pull them forward into the current state, recognizing that, that it is new for a lot of people. So I'm gonna give you a quick example. At the place where I work, we have had Microsoft Teams for a few years now. And when they were first introduced to the organization, there were a couple of people, the go-getter techie types who were on board they were with it they had their teams they were using teams they were encouraging others right they were all they were they were there they were doing it and then we had the other set of people who were like nope i do not need one more thing to learn i'm not doing it i i my work gets done just fine i don't need it um i'll learn it later or whatever and then there was a bunch of us in the middle and i was i'll admit i was in this group in the middle where i learned it I dabbled in it, I used it, I got comfortable with it, but I wasn't really committed to it. I would use Teams when other people asked me to use Teams. I learned it, I could have used Teams for my work, I just didn't apply it, you know, right? I was busy with other things. So I was okay with it, but I wasn't one way or the other. Well, now in today's uh, work world, this new normal, everybody's using Teams and everybody is becoming proficient and obtaining mastery of Microsoft Teams. We are all in with Teams because we have to be, right? I, we can't call a meeting together in person in the boardroom. We have to use Teams or something similar. So I'm just using Teams as an example. Now I want you to think about that in terms of pulling forward previous employment or previous employment skills. I knew Teams, I was comfortable with Teams. I actually had it on my resume, right? Because it was a technology that was coming out in the work world. I wanted to show that I was interested in trends and able to learn new technologies. But so it was on my resume, but now I need to pull it forward. I had it as a one-liner in a list of many types of technologies that I used. Now I'm going to really point out Microsoft Teams and not just that I'm comfortable with it, but that I'm proficient with it. And I'm uh, I have mastery with the software and I can train others on it and all this, right? I'm pulling it forward into this new normal. Okay, and that's just one example. Think about that with all the things that your, your skills, your knowledge, your tools. All right, let's carry on. So as you're looking at your resume, you've updated it. You've made sure that it reflects all your latest work. You've thought about what's missing. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention, I just want to mention real quick. You don't need to dive right into your resume and start changing things. It's actually a good idea if you can jot down your thoughts and ideas on a separate piece of paper. And you could do this electronically, that's fine. You could pull up a document or a Google Doc or whatever and just start typing these ideas. But um, I'm not such a fan of doing that first round of revisions with an electronic document because it's so linear, right? You have to type it, it goes across, up, down, right? It's just, it forces you to think in a linear fashion. I highly recommend that you use old fashioned paper and pencil or pen or marker or crayons or whatever. Use something that allows you to be creative and think in a non-linear fashion. Using paper means that when you're thinking about like what's missing on my resume, right from the last slide, you're thinking about what's missing. You could just jot it down and you could jot down skills over here and over here and are they related and how might you connect them and you can draw and doodle. So I highly recommend paper and pencil as you're doing these first rounds of revisions. So that was true for the last slide and it's gonna be true for this slide too. For this slide, in the new normal, you have to, have to, focus on technology and digital skills, right? We all were using technology before. It was a heavy part of our day, but now think about how we're using technology. Again, if you're a student, think about how 
you use technology in your classes before and how you're using them now. You're, you're forced to use your technology probably for all communication, for all of your communication. If you consider your fellow students your colleagues, right? Your instructor might be, think of your instructor as like a boss or a supervisor. All of that type of communication. And that's just one example. All of our work now has to be handled through technology. And it doesn't make the work new, but it makes it different. It makes it a little bit different, right? When you're crafting an email, but you know you're going to see that person in a few hours or the next day, you could just send off a quick email and be like, yeah, I'll explain it when I see them. Or I don't really have to worry about how it sounds in an email because I'll see them and I'll, I'll, I'll walk down to their office and talk to them about it a little more. Now we don't have that luxury. I have to make sure that an email message encompasses everything I mean to convey and it doesn't encompass anything I don't mean to convey. I have to very much worry about how it sounds because I won't be able to explain myself later in person where there's a lot more flexibility when we're face to face versus online. Okay, so what so focus on technology and digital skills. Jot down the, the technology that you've been using. Just brainstorm what software have you been using and all of it. I want all of it. Just jot 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 it down. Every little software tool that you have. And then you can start to categorize them. Um, word processing spreadsheet or if that's too fine of a detail maybe um, office productivity uh, tools put them all together in a category cloud computing tools they can all go in a category so that's things like teams google docs right all this all this stuff that we do solely in the cloud um, mention multiple platforms do you know windows and mac do you know the microsoft suite and the google suite of software right so mention that um, mention how you are now working in digital workspaces. And this is a little bit different for students than it is for your career side. So you might have to think about it in both places. So again, a digital workplace is something like Slack or MS Teams, where we're coming together as a team in a digital environment and we're doing things like sharing documents and meetings and posting videos and all this sort of stuff, right? It's an, it encompasses an entire workspace. So how are digital workspaces different for students? I want you to think about the online platforms or spaces that you use for your classes. Blackboard is a kind of digital workspace, but we don't use it in businesses. So this one's gonna be um, a good place for us to stop and talk about the difference between mentioning the category versus mentioning the specific software, right? So think of all the ways that using Blackboard has prepared you for working in a digital space with others. You know how to upload, download, you know how to share documents. If you've used the video conference meeting space in Blackboard, you can mention um, that skill that you know how to use that tool. You know how to communicate online via a digital workspace. You know how to collaborate with others via that digital workspace. So in that example, you want to be sure that you're mentioning the category and speaking to the category and not perhaps the specific software. Okay, and then so and then we're going to remember that we want to talk about things in these broad categories because our future employer might not have the specific software that we're proficient in. And that could be true for Blackboard, but that could also be true for MS Teams or the Microsoft Suite. Maybe instead of using Microsoft Word, they use Google Docs, or that, that's not a very common example. It could be out there, but you, you see what I mean, that um, you, we find ourselves in a delicate balance between being proficient at a specific software but we want to make sure that we mention that broad category because here's the trick. Anybody can be trained. The fact that you know it in one tool means you can learn it in another tool. And that's what you want to convey is that you're confident, you're capable, you have this skill set and this knowledge that you can carry forward to other tools. And now I'm going to throw a wrench in the works you should actually mention any of the popular software tools that are out there. So in fact, if you know Teams, if you know Slack or Trello, if you know Skype or Zoom, 
mention them specifically because there are times it still happens where employers want somebody who knows that software. They want somebody who is proficient with Teams. They want someone who can run WebEx meetings and help others with their WebEx accounts. So uh, you want to mention these broad categories, right? Because you're talking about things so that people know you can carry forward your skills and knowledge from one tool set to another, but then where applicable, mention the popular software programs as well. And you could do a Google search. If you're not sure, is Asana? I've never heard of Asana. How is that a popular software? Well, in an office environment, it is becoming a more prevalent software tool that people are using. And you can do a search out there for trends in um, office tools or whatever your career uh, category is. Do a search for the, the popular most used whatever software tools. All right, let's carry on. So we have been working a lot in Teams. This is not a new trend, but we need to think about it in a new way. So uh, um, I know of no one who's able to work independently on their own with no one else. And I know several people who own their own businesses and they, and they have no employees. They are it. They, they work in their own business. I'm going to tell you about a friend of mine. He owns his own graphic design shop. So he does banners and signs. He does lettering for cars, things like that, and vehicles. And he's it. He owns the business. He's the only employee. There is no one else. And still, he has to work with teams, right? His team just encompasses people from other organizations. His clients are a part of his team. His vendors are a part of his team, right? He has to buy his supplies from someone else. They're a part of his team because without good relationships among those people, he won't have any work to do. So I want you to think in all of the ways that you have worked with teams, and those teams might be other students, instructors, it might be t colleagues, coworkers. How do you work with others and think of them as a team? Because that's what we're seeing in this new normal is this emphasis on the identification of a team. And how is that different now? Okay, so you're thinking about how you work with teams. The next step is to think about how is that life different now than it was a year ago or two years ago, or even, let's be honest, six months ago. All right, so I, I've worked in teams, right, for years and years and years. I've actually taught online for years and I've worked uh, remotely for years, but it's different now. All of that work now is remote. So I'm remotely managing multiple calendars for all of my team members so that I can line up a series of team meetings, moving the work forward, even in this remote environment. I'm having to coordinate technology, right? If I have team members who aren't as comfortable with software, I have to help them with their software. I have done more support for video <laughs> in the last six months than I ever had to before, right? Because now people have to use it. And let's take a look at bullet point number three. Third-party projects are becoming more prevalent. prevalent. It, this might not be true for you, but I want you to think about it for a minute. So I work in an administrative capacity. That's my professional experience. And we are now seeing projects come forward from our colleagues that I'm having to help with. So for example, if I'm supporting um, an executive, if I'm providing administrative support to an executive, and that executive worked on a, a team that I wasn't involved with, I, in the old days, you know, six months ago, I didn't have to worry about that work, what we might call that third party work. Now in today's environment, because everything is so different and people need more support and more help and are working cl um, more closely with others because they need that, I'm now having to provide that third party support. So my executive's other team that I was not involved with, I'm now starting to have to help that executive get that um, teamwork done or learn the skills to be able to participate in that team fully. So we're really thinking about how are things different now in this new normal when we're working with teams. I have other um, phrases on this slide for you to consider and while you're doing that, right, you're jotting down on your piece of paper how you're working with teams. You're doing it on paper so that you can have that free flow of thought. Grab another piece of paper if you're running out. You're just jotting down 
these ideas. You could jot down these phrases to help inspire you. And now is where I need to take another sidestep and talk to you about wording and phrasing. Um, I have been on purpose a little bit vague as I talk about these things throughout all these slides, the technology, the digital skills, the updating the resume. I haven't given you any concrete phrases or words to use, and that's on purpose. If you are gonna copy somebody else's words, your resume is gonna ring false. Any of your documents will ring false. They won't represent you, they won't sound like you, and when you go to that interview, there'll be a disconnect from what they read in your documents versus seeing you on the video conference interview, and, and that's not gonna go well, right? You don't want that mismatch. You don't want people to think, this isn't who I thought this person was. So what I'm saying to you is, the words and the phrases that you use have to sound like you. So you can take inspiration, look at the phrases I have on this slide, take inspiration from them, and then make them fit within the context of your documents. Change a word or two, change the way the verb sits, change the way the words lay, maybe, um, they're not such long, I have sentence fragments here, maybe they're such not long, they're shorter fragments, maybe that fits better for your resume. Or maybe you turn them into full sentences and put them in your cover letter. It has to sound like you. Now there's no harm in finding inspiration for others. We, there's tons of resume templates and you can Google resumes and get ideas from others. There's nothing wrong with that. But you cannot use their words and phrases because it just won't sound like you. And worse than that, what sometimes I see, and I see hundreds, hundreds of um, application materials. Actually, I've seen thousands over the many years that I've worked with people, graduates trying to obtain jobs. What happens is when people start pulling in words and phrases from others, then their, their materials look like patchwork. They have some really tight sentences and then they have some long sentences or they'll, they'll use different kinds of verbs and it just looks terrible. So you, you can't do that. Don't copy and paste. Jot them down if you need inspiration and then turn them into your own words. And you're kind of like an artist here, right? Nobody paints a complete picture in one day. Nobody writes an entire song with all of the complexities in one day. They might write the lyrics one day, but then they're noodling on the, on the melody over a few days. And that's what you wanna to do too. Jot it down, get the ideas there, add them to your resume, see how they fit, set it aside, come back a day later or two days later and look at it again and draw another stroke of the paint brush, right? You're gonna tweak it to get it to be the best possible document it can be. And this is gonna be true for all of your application materials. And then at this point, I just wanna stop and talk to you about the job application process. So, um, I hate to break it to you, but you will not be selected for a job. You will have to win the job. There is never an instance where there's one candidate for a job and they're just given it. If there's one candidate for a job and it didn't garner any other applications, the organization's gonna say, uh, something's wrong. <laughs> we need to redo this and gather more applicants. We have to have more candidates. We need to choose from a pool. So when you're working with your career advancement documents, you need to think about how are you gonna be the best candidate? It's a competition. Other people are applying for this job. How do you let that organization know you're the best candidate for that job? You are the one that they should pick. That's why your documents have to reflect you. That's why you have to spend time thinking about them. And that's why you constantly wanna keep revising them every so often, just updating your resume and your other documents with new skills and new projects you've worked on and new knowledge you've acquired and new events that you have attended. Because it is so time consuming to create the documents that'll win you the job. Don't save that for the last minute. Do you know that phrase? How does that go? You want to stay ready so you don't have to get ready? It's too time consuming to hurry up and get ready and apply for a job, right? It'll take you all weekend. Stay ready. Instead of getting ready, stay ready. Make sure your documents are kind of always ready to go. You're just gonna 
look at the 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 art that it is and you're going to tweak it to to help it be ready now right now during this new normal this is a big overhaul right we're we're repainting a cathedral here it, the the painting was done but we have a complete overhaul to do because things are so different but after this point then we're just going to revise them and we're going to keep our eye on them and now how often do you do that i can't say for certain but i'll give you an estimate if you are actively seeking a position, you should be updating your materials at least once a month, once, at least once a month if you're actively searching for a job, right? If you're not really searching for a job, you want to be doing it maybe once a year. And here's when you can do it. Everybody works in a position where they have an annual review. That might not be what it's called. Sometimes they're called professional development plans or things of that nature, but we do them typically on an annual basis. And when you update those documents, then go ahead and update all your other documents as well because it'll be fresh on your mind. And that'll give you this opportunity to refresh the paint, to update the artistry that is present in your job search documents. Okay, so we're talking about updating your career advancement materials in the new normal, that is life that has changed since the start of the pandemic. And as we're updating our career advancement materials, I'll just go through a quick reminder with you. You wanna be talking about, oops, wrong way, let's try this again. You wanna be talking about working with teams and fit that phrase in throughout, wherever it's applicable. It doesn't have to be one section. If that rings true to you in your documents, then fine, have one section that says working with teams and then talk about the way you work with teams. Otherwise, just, uh, mention it as it fits in the other places. Perhaps under education, you could talk about how you work with teams. Under your employment history, mention how you're working with teams under special skills, so on and so forth. You're gonna be focusing on technology and digital skills, mentioning them in, cat in broad categories so that people know you can transfer those skills to other technologies. And then also mentioning software specifically by name where it is used in your career field. You're also thinking about how is your work different now than it was before. Okay, with these things in mind, we're gonna talk about our next category, which is transferable skills. So um, I, I slipped it in there. Did you hear me say it? Uh, Technology is a great way to think about transferable skills because you may have been trained and you may be um, very proficient with a software an online software platform like Blackboard, but your next employer very likely is not gonna use Blackboard. You're not gonna to need to know Blackboard for your next uh, job. So then what do you do? Well, you wanna make sure that your employment documents reflect the fact that you can transfer those skills. So what is Blackboard really about? It's a cloud platform that allows you to work in teams, sharing documents, communicating, um, staying on track with to-do lists, right? Think about all the ways that you use Blackboard and think of that, think of using Blackboard in terms of the skills that you're using. You can transfer those skills to new environments, to new work environments, to other tools, to other cloud uh, technology, and that's what you want to convey. All right, so technology is one kind of easy example. Let's talk about some other examples. Um, there are lots of times where people in the past have asked me, well, I've transitioned from one industry to a new industry. I used to work in um, visual communications and now I'm in healthcare or something like that. You know, it's completely different industries. And should I mention my old industry? Is it applicable? And in the past, we would have said, and again, right, the past was like six months or a year ago, we would have said, kind of downplay that and play up what you've done in your new industry. Make sure that your new industry stands out and downplay the old. Nowadays, in the new normal, we, we don't mind seeing cross uh, discipline or work across multiple industries because what it shows is that you're resilient and you're adaptable, point number two. So working across industries, it's fine to mention that and you can even call it out and call it out for for, for what it's worth, <laughs> mention that 
working across multiple industries has allowed you to better understand your adaptability and resiliency and your preparedness to make advancements in the future, no matter what the work environment, right? That that cross industry experience, use it to your advantage. Okay, if you don't have cross industry experience, maybe you don't have enough employment history to have had that happen, or maybe you've only worked in one industry for your career, <clears throat> for your career so far, that's okay too. Think about how your job or how your employment skills have evolved over time. Are there instances that you can talk to that speak to your resiliency and your adaptability? And mention those specifically and mention those skills because they are what people want to see. This new normal has thrown us a major curveball and we wanna see who's rising to the top. And you're one, you're one of those folks who's rising to the top. So mention that, call that out. And then any special skills that you have that again can transfer from one place to another, right? Technology skills, knowledge, cross industry skills, people skills, communication skills, all of these th things are transferable and you wanna call them out. Innovative thinking. So this phrase, innovative thinking, it's been around forever. People love it. We want employees who are innovative thinkers, right? This has been around forever. This is not new, but so, so think of it this way. It's the same animal, but it's a different animal. How have you had to apply innovative thinking during the pandemic? Lots of us have. Call it out. Mention it. Tell your future employer what innovative thinking you had to apply during the pandemic because now we have concrete examples and again um it you you can mention something specific but make sure you phrase it in a way that highlights the fact that you're just an innovative thinker you're someone who could rise to the top you're the someone who can roll with the punches right to use these catchphrases so here i have an example on the screen and this is from my work life that I deal with um, interns. I deal with lots of interns and the pandemic threw us for a loop. It, it stopped internships in their tracks and yet internships are required for students to graduate. So what do we do with that? We had to think on our feet and come up with solutions. And this document um, is with, in collaboration with colleagues where we thought about eight different possible solutions just because the pandemic hit didn't and and our internship hosts where students were actually completing their internships our host said nope we can't have your intern come here anymore well we had to think of solutions they still needed to complete their internship so we proposed eight innovative innovative solutions that in fact allowed students to complete their internships and graduate within that semester and now we've used that innovative thinking to reshape how we think about internships in the future. This pandemic will pass, but something else is gonna come along. For us here in Wisconsin, maybe it's a tornado, right? Something's gonna come along. It's that innovative thinking. That's what I'm trying to capture, right? I have a concrete example I can talk about, but it shows that I'm ready. I'm ready to go find solutions, be an innovative thinker. You get the idea. So on your piece of paper, what I want you to do actually for this one is I want you to take yourself for a walk or go sit in the garden, turn off all devices and just think about what were some of the, and here's how you can think about it. What were some of the challenges you faced when, that, when the pandemic hit? What, what were the struggle points for you? Those are your challenges. And how did you overcome them? What solutions did you find? And um, how did you apply those solutions? Did you help others with their solutions? Did you help them brainstorm solutions? And these can come in all forms. It can be helping your kids. It could be helping your partner. It could be helping your neighbor, right? It's just, you're just trying to capture the innovative thinking that you applied to solve the crisis at hand. And then I have to mention something here as well. We weren't the only ones with interns, right? millions of interns across the globe were affected by the pandemic. We weren't the only ones to solve that problem. So you might, you know, as you're thinking about your innovative solutions, don't downplay it. Don't be like, well, yeah, but everybody had to figure out how to help their kid finish kindergarten. It wasn't just me. Don't go there. 
think about how did you solve that problem? Because you did, you did help. You helped us get over these hurdles and carry on. That's what you wanna showcase. Okay, and then of course, choose your wording, your phrasing, get that in there. So now we've spent all this time updating our career advancement documents. We've redone our resume. We've updated our cover letters. You might have more than one, by the way, depending on how you like to handle that. You've updated your LinkedIn account. You've revised your electronic portfolio. You've revamped the wording that you use when you um, use an online application. You've done all these things so that your materials are good and ready to go. Now, how do you find that job online? What kind of research do you do? Who's hiring in, during a pandemic? Well, people are hiring, um, right? Life goes on even in a global pandemic. People were planning to retire and they're retiring. People, so that leaves an opening. Somebody else is getting a promotion, right? Because that work needs to be done, leaving an opening. Somebody else has decided, you know what? They, they, don't, they can't work full time and they're gonna go part time and that creates an opening. So people are hiring, we're adjusting for it and they are too. So a couple of suggestions. Make sure you're reaching out, of course, online. Networking is still the number one pay way that people find, uh, find out about a position. Um, so reaching out to people online. LinkedIn, of course, LinkedIn. Make sure your LinkedIn materials are up to date. And now, after that, be active on LinkedIn. And here's a mistake that most people make is when they're searching for a job, all of a sudden they're active on LinkedIn. Have you ever even noticed this? Like sometimes your LinkedIn connections, all of a sudden one person's like super active. They're posting like three things a day, every day for a couple of weeks and then they're silent, right? Well, they're looking for a job. So they're being active on LinkedIn. So they just pour this bucket of activity on LinkedIn and you don't wanna do that. Well, I mean, you can do that, but that's not the ideal. What you wanna do is be active on LinkedIn a little bit all of the time because that actually triggers a couple of things. That triggers the LinkedIn, the way that the LinkedIn technology works, that triggers it to show that you're an active user and then that pushes your account to people who are searching for candidates. So you wanna be active a little bit all of the time. If you can think of five things you wanna post, then post them once a day or once every other day. Be active all of the time. And that's hard, right? Then you have to think of things. Well, what the heck am I gonna say today? And you can make it easy on yourself. You don't have to do the hard stuff right away. You know, there's lots of memes and quotes out there. You can share those. A good leader is da da da. We all work together for teams, hooray, or whatever, right? You can post those things, get started with those things. And that's your warm up exercise, right? When you're prepping, to do, to, to do a, a, a 5K run, you don't just start out of the gate, you warm up a little bit. So give yourself some warm ups, some easy, easy warm ups, getting ready for LinkedIn. And then, you know, a week later, you can start trying to make it a little bit harder. Give kudos and congratulations to teammates and colleagues. You, you have been in school with lots of other students. Connect with them on LinkedIn. That's actually an activity on LinkedIn. So just connecting with another person, instead of connecting to 20 people in one day, spread it out. One, one day, two, another day, another day, another day, right? That's activity, spread that out as well. And then call out that person when they do a good thing. It, when they post something, comment on it. That makes you an active person. And then share. If you work for an organization, your organization's gonna be pushing out social media, share that on LinkedIn. I'm so proud to work for Robert Half and Company, here's what, or whatever, right? You're pushing out, all right, so you're gonna be active, you're gonna be a little bit active all the time, and you're gonna push out the, the positivity. Uh, in, the latest, in the latest report that I read, human resource uh, hiring managers use LinkedIn 86% of the time when they're uh, when they have a job candidate in mind that they're looking to interview they'll they'll look them up on linkedin so your linkedin is number one has to be number one but you should be aware of the other social media hiring managers report that they will search other social media sites for their job candidates they want to know who they're hiring and this isn't um you know th the reason for this is a good reason they want to make sure that that person's going to be a right fit you don't wanna get hired for a company where you're out of place or 
the work is a mismatch to what you thought it was going to be. So let them know who you are. On your other social media accounts, if you are actively searching for work or if you're looking at your long-term career goals, you are going to be positive and you're going to incorporate the positivity that we see in our professional social media into your personal social media. You're going to take it up a notch. It's not just, remember the old days when we said, oh, just don't show yourself falling down the stairs or something like that. You know, just be careful about what you post. Now it's more than that. You have to cultivate that positive image of yourself, sharing the congratulations and the kudos with others and being a little bit of a self promoter, sharing the good things about your life, your work, you as a holistic person in all of your social media accounts. All right, we're almost done. I just have a few questions for you to consider as you walk through this process of advancing your career during the new normal. My first question for you is, how are you um, able to encourage mentorship during this time of online work? So whether you would be um, the benefactor of seeking a mentor, or if you would benefit from serving as a mentor to someone else. When we're talking about career advancement, mentorship is everything. Think about um, the, the situation that you're in when you're looking for work. Everyone else has been in your position. Everyone uh, uh, in the work world has been in your position. We've all had to apply for and win uh, the job that we that we applied for, right? Everybody's been in this position. So why is it that we all feel like we have to walk this path alone? Reach out to others. Um, in the previous slide, I talked to you about reaching out to others. It can be via LinkedIn or other social media. And start to ask, what advice do you have? This is a great way to be active on LinkedIn. What advice do you have for someone who's beginning their career and seeking um, the best employment position to start their career or something like that? Or what advice do you have for someone who's searching for a job and wants to make sure that their application materials are the best that they can possibly be? Or what advice do you have for, for uh, job interviews in today's uh, world? So, how, how can you take advantage of either having a mentor or being a mentor to someone else? Both are very worthwhile activities. Having someone else to bounce ideas off of is great. Now, you have to make sure that it's a professional mentorship relationship, right? That person's not your counselor. They're not there to help you with every detail. You have to step up to the plate. They are in no way offloading the work that has to be done. You're just occasionally bouncing ideas off of them and using them as a role model, right? You're going to watch what they do and emulate, um, emulate their actions and asking for their advice along the way. Now, that sounds great, but I don't want you to discount the fact that you can be a mentor to someone else, especially if you're at the end of your academic life and getting ready for graduation. Think about mentoring a student who's just beginning their academic path and how can you help them along the way. Helping another person is actually the best way to get yourself in shape, right? Who's in the best physical shape that you know? Your personal trainer. Helping someone else with their career advancement is in the end actually gonna help your career advancement um, greatly. Okay, question number two. Are you seeing an increase in the rigor and standards? This can be, uh, and I'm asking this in the context of your work life in the new pandemic. We're seeing managers shift their attitudes to how they manage their staff. And in some cases, that um, what we're seeing is actually an increase in the rigor. It sounds uh, dichotomous, but we're seeing this um, trend because managers aren't seeing their staff in person. They're applying a more rigorous, a higher level of standard for this kind of remote work? And is that happening to you? And I'm asking you to think about that question because it leads into the, the final question here. Question number three, how has your job changed? That's one way that it might have changed. But really I'm asking that question because I want you to consider what does that mean for the next time that your organization hires? 
if a manager is increasing the rigor, if they're changing the way that they manage, if your job duties have changed, right? And we talked about this before, it's the same animal, but it's in a different light. Um, what does that mean for the next time that they hire? And you want to reflect that in your job application materials, because that's true for the organization that you're applying with as well. As it has changed for you at your work, at your organization, it's changing for other organizations too. And so you want to fit what they are seeking, right? And so you can use this to your advantage in a couple of ways. Think about how your manager has changed the way they manage in this um, new world, the new normal. And make sure to convey that, that you can work with a manager, an executive, a supervisor in these new circumstances that you can help get the work done, be productive, um, promote success in this new normal, right? That you're ready to go with these changes and you're ready to help support the success of the organization during this new normal. All right, so I've only got three because we already have so much work to do. Get started and I wish you the best of luck. If you are online and seeking connections, feel free to look me up. I'm out there, Twitter, LinkedIn, right? Um, willing to, to watch you grow in your career advancement and achieve the position of your dreams. Good luck.